NASA says that right now is a brilliant, significant chance to focus on the world Venus. This follows the new revelations of possible life on the planet. If you somehow find yourself exploring NASA's records from the 1960s, you'd see the space agency calling Venus a planet of judgment. Meanwhile, Mars became our primary target. Such careful naming of the most significant planets wasn't common during the wild space race period. The Soviet Union was focused on sending expensive missions to Venus. The stunning planet showed little to no potential for life, yet the Soviet space program didn't decommission the Venera program until the fall of the USSR. Thanks to Neil deGrasse Tyson, we finally understand why. Join us as we check the declassified photographs from Venus taken by the Soviet Union. The fall of the Soviet Union was significant in more ways than one. Not only did it shift the global direction of the world, but the breakdown of the USSR also buried many mysteries with it. The fact that the Soviets had a deep penchant for secrets, from running the most clandestine intelligence agency in the world to being secretive about their true capabilities regarding extraterrestrial contact, suggests that the former superpower holds many untold secrets. Before the United States surpassed most planetary endeavors in space, the Soviet Union was leading the game. While the USSR had a long history of both successful and failed space missions, its most notable focus was on the very hostile planet Venus. In the Russian language, you'd see Venus as Venera, which is also the name of the mission that lasted from 1961 to 1983. During the same time, the U.S. was busy sending its missions to the moon. In a way, the Soviets chose to use their resources elsewhere. We can't say that the whole fixation on the second planet from our sun is odd. Did the Soviets want to use the planet's surface as a feasible, well-prepared power station? Or were they perhaps hoping to colonize the planet after searching for any signs of life there? It's hard to say why the Soviets focused on the harsh planet as they conducted these missions during the Cold War. They weren't entirely open about their intentions. In fact, everything we know about the Venusian missions comes from declassified and unarchived data. However, after so much, it's difficult to pinpoint what the Soviets were truly searching for and whether they ever uncovered the secrets of Venus. The Soviets didn't land on Venus once or even twice, but many times, at least that's true. The Soviets launched 28 expensive rockets to the dazzling planet. Furthermore, 13 of those entered the Venusian atmosphere, while 8 actually landed. Such complex missions put the Soviets in a leading position in space exploration. Sure, the U.S. was a close second, but NASA was more interested in satellites and innovative technology than in searching for life on other planets. Their focus was on Mars, which, in turn, wasn't especially unusual or particularly bad. Your history textbook may not tell you this, but the Soviet space program was the first to send a probe into the atmosphere of a planet other than Earth. It also had another set of firsts to its name. The USSR became the first state to achieve a soft landing on another planet, returning pictures and sounds from the surface of that planet. In fact, the Soviets had their own one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind moment long before the U.S. So why do we rarely hear about such accomplishments? Well, remember what we said about the Soviet penchant for maintaining secrets. That's just one of many reasons for the oversight of the Soviet space program. In 1992, the prominent agency was decommissioned following the collapse of the USSR, and the agency had to be revived under a new Russian identity, Roscosmos, many of its original records were either lost or destroyed. This is precisely why we don't have a clear answer as to why the Soviets launched 28 rockets into the Venusian air. Still, we can make the most reasonable hypothesis. Perhaps the Soviet decision to explore Venus was more about cost-effectiveness than anything else. It's not to say that the space program didn't recognize the planet's true potential. They were searching for practical water levels, sunlight radiation, and the general characteristics of the planet. Without a series of these space missions, it would have been incredibly challenging to assess Venus's high temperatures and thick atmosphere. Today, many astronomers don't believe that the hostile planet could support life. The temperatures there are high enough to melt lead, and water is scarce. Moreover, because of its thick atmosphere, the atmospheric pressure on Venus is often about 90 times that of Earth. Nevertheless, there are still ongoing advancements, and to overlook the USSR's contribution to the exploration of Venus would be to alter history. 
As far as the Soviets were concerned, Venus was worth investigating, even if it was just to fuel the space race. Looking at other, more hospitable planets like Mars wasn't completely off the table, but it was more expensive than sending probes to Venus. Everything basically boils down to the distance from Earth to another celestial body. On average, the hostile planet is only 40 million kilometers away from our home, while Mars is, on average, 250 million kilometers away. Such vast differences in distance result in huge differences in cost. Besides, if the U.S. wasn't the world's largest economy, it might never have explored Mars as easily. Different reports suggest that Soviet missions were dangerous and had significant technical gaps. Obviously, the spacecraft weren't equipped to cover vast distances. Furthermore, the agency had a poor history of losing contact with its rockets. So it makes sense why the Soviet space program chose a more affordable and closer mission that would yield results. However, if we don't consider the space race in this context, the story of the Venera missions would be incomplete. The U.S. wasn't even on the space map when the Soviet program launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957. This move kicked off the space race and maintained its momentum. What's especially interesting is why the U.S. focused on the moon instead of Venus. NASA had a series of failures with its Venus missions during the 1960s, and as a result, the U.S. space agency hit a roadblock known as the Venus Curse. Every time they launched a probe into the Venusian air, it failed. This was exactly when the Soviet Union saw an opportunity to capitalize on NASA's failures. At that point, both the U.S. and the Soviets were determined to win the space race. The best strategy was to take advantage of two distinct opportunities. It was a quiet but decisive technique. The Soviet space program seized Earth's sister planet as the main victory in the space race, achieving something its major rival had failed to do. Despite the empire's limited resources and faltering government, the Soviet Union repeatedly sent missions to Venus to secure its winning position against the U.S. Unlike NASA's focus on the moon, this strategic decision wasn't without hostility. Furthermore, interesting propaganda was used to cloud their significant failures with Venus. The American government was prompted to scrutinize the USSR's obsession with the planet in the media. Venus was labeled the evil planet, while Mars became humankind's destiny. These names didn't matter to the Soviets. Their mission was to prove their superiority over the Americans, and they succeeded in doing so. The Venera missions are almost forgotten in modern history, yet despite their early difficulties, these missions were extraordinarily refined, advanced, and ambitious. At the beginning of the space age, the Venera missions led the way. Back in the 1950s, the Soviets began testing the design and technical details of the probes. For the next 30 years, they continued to build and launch interplanetary spacecraft as part of the Venera program. Since the program was running alongside a fierce Cold War, the Soviets focused on improving their resources. Fortunately for them, the early years of the conflict gave them more resources than the U.S., which turned out to be incredibly valuable. It allowed them to build larger rockets designed to break through high altitudes and cover vast distances. The Soviets rushed to experiment with both manned and unmanned rockets, while the Soviet academic community was working on a series of calculations and assessments to create accurate guidance for the Venus missions. In the background, their Mars programs were also running, as nothing was more important than developing advanced instrumentation for these missions. This led to significant breakthroughs in the history of space exploration. In 1966, the Soviet Union launched Venera 3, making it the first artificial probe to enter the atmosphere of Venus and successfully land on the planet's surface. This achievement intensified the competition between the two superpowers. Unlike the American missions, which were plagued by failures and setbacks, the Soviet program continued to make progress. Despite their successes, the USSR managed to send successful probes into the Venusian atmosphere. The key issue with this approach was limited design capabilities. The Soviets quickly overcame their design problems and launched the most advanced probes of the Venera program during the 1970s. Their pioneering efforts allowed them to achieve the first simultaneous launches of Venera 4 and Venera 5. According to most historians, this was the most exciting decade in the history of space exploration. Undoubtedly, the U.S. attempted to develop similar launch strategies. 
So why did the Soviet agency opt for simultaneous launches into Venus? To understand this, you need to recognize that interplanetary travel requires advanced instrumentation to gather the highest level of information and evidence. The probes were initially launched to study the planet's surface, and that's exactly what happened with Venera 4. Since the launch went smoothly, the probe successfully entered Venus's atmosphere. The Soviet program continued with Venera 5, but this wasn't just a repeat of the first launch. The second probe was specifically designed to gather detailed information about the planet. Ultimately, the Soviets wanted to survive the obstacles of temperature, atmospheric pressure, and radiation on Venus. They didn't have to wait long for their answers. By the mid-1970s, the Soviet program was entering the most advanced phase of the Venera missions. Everything the USSR had done up until that point was about advancement and improvement. It was about ensuring that their plans and progress were more up-to-date. It was also about perfecting the techniques and mechanics of interplanetary travel. For the second decade of the Venera missions, the Soviet Union aimed to conduct exploratory missions. The most exciting and thrilling launch of this period was Venera 7. As the 11th Soviet probe entered Venus's atmosphere, it became the first spacecraft to send back data from another planet's surface. By this point, the planet's high temperatures, density, and surface pressures had already been recorded. The Soviets were attempting to record Venusian sounds. The next major achievement for the program came in the mid-1980s, when Venera 13 surpassed all previous interplanetary missions in terms of complexity. This spacecraft was the first to capture panoramic images of Venus's surface. Simultaneously, the Soviet program launched Venera 14 to gather similar data about the planet's surface. As the Soviet Union was perhaps the only country to recognize Venus's importance, the Russian Space Agency has revived its aspirations for Venus missions. Venera is a forthcoming joint mission between Roscosmos and NASA to explore the atmosphere and surface of Venus. The name Venera represents Venus in Russian. It's expected to launch in the late 2020s or early 2030s, with plans to study the planet's atmosphere, geological history, and search for signs of current or past habitability. The spacecraft will include an orbiter, a lander, and potentially an inflatable to study the planet's climate in detail. The legacy of the Venera mission extends far beyond their technical achievements and global ramifications. These missions, initiated by the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War, represented a peak of human ingenuity and determination in exploring the universe. Despite facing numerous challenges and setbacks, the Soviets persevered in their quest to reveal the secrets of Venus, a planet long believed to be hostile and inhospitable. One of the most significant aspects of the Venera missions was their pioneering use of unmanned probes to study planetary conditions and surfaces. These missions paved the way for future exploration beyond Earth's orbit and laid the foundation for our understanding of planetary science. The data gathered by the Venera spacecraft provided crucial insights into Venus's extreme climate including its scorching temperatures, crushing air pressure, and toxic atmosphere dominated by carbon dioxide. Additionally, the technological advances achieved through the Venera program had broader implications for space exploration, including the development of heat-resistant materials, reliable communication systems, and effective landing techniques. These achievements contributed to subsequent missions to other planets, such as Mars and beyond. The lessons learned from the Venera missions continue to inform spacecraft design and operational strategies in contemporary space exploration efforts. Beyond their scientific and technological significance, the Venera missions also had important social and political consequences. During the space race era, these missions symbolized the rivalry between superpowers for dominance in space exploration. For the Soviet Union, Succeeding with the Venera missions was not only about scientific discovery but also about demonstrating technological prowess and ideological superiority over the U.S. The global community closely followed each Venera mission, recognizing their importance in expanding humanity's understanding of the solar system. The successful soft landing of Venera 7 on Venus in 1970 marked a historic milestone as the first space vehicle to communicate data from another planet's surface. This achievement highlighted the Soviet Union's ability to overcome the tremendous challenges posed by Venus's harsh environment. In addition to scientific instruments, 
the Venera spacecraft carried cameras that captured the first close-up images of Venus's surface. These pictures revealed a rugged landscape dominated by rocky plains and volcanic features, providing researchers with valuable insights into the planet's history and development. The panoramic photographs taken by later missions, such as Venera 13 and 14, further enhanced our understanding of Venus's surface morphology and composition. Despite their successes, the Venera missions also faced their share of failures and challenges. Some missions either failed to reach Venus or encountered technical breakdowns that prevented them from transmitting data back to Earth. The harsh conditions of Venus, temperatures exceeding 450 degrees Celsius, 842 degrees Fahrenheit, and corrosive sulfuric acid clouds, presented enormous engineering challenges for spacecraft design and operation. Nevertheless, the determination and dedication of Soviet scientists and engineers involved in the Venera program paved the way for future missions to Venus and other celestial bodies. The legacy of the Venera missions lives on in the ongoing exploration of Venus by space agencies worldwide, including NASA's upcoming Venus mission in collaboration with Roscosmos. Looking forward, the Venera mission plans to build on the achievements of its predecessors by sending advanced instruments to study Venus's atmosphere, surface geology, and potential signs of past or present habitability. The mission represents a collaborative effort to unlock the remaining secrets of Earth's closest planetary neighbor and deepen our understanding of the conditions that could support life beyond our own planet.